We've been widely reporting, um, or it is being widely reported, that Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission, the CRTC, has opened a public consultation on a complaint from an LGBTQ rights group to ban Fox News from Canadian cable television. I kid you not, just when Fox thought things couldn't get worse, now the CRTC is actually investigating whether or not to ban them. And once again, it deals with Tucker Carlson, if you can believe it. So this, this woke leftist group, it's a hardcore trans group, is accusing Tucker Carlson of having made, quote, false and horrifying claims about transgender individuals. Uh, during the so-called offending segment, here's what uh, they said. According to this group, Carlson made the inflammatory and false claim that trans people are targeting Christians. This obviously had to do after a trans person shot up the Christian school. To position trans people in existential opposition to Christianity <laughs> is an incitement of violence against trans people that is plain to any viewer. Oh, is it? Is it plain? It's so obvious. It is so obvious to, to, to position trans people in opposition to historic Christianity is so obviously an incitement of violence. Wow, obvious, huh? Uh, look, I got to be honest with you. I just think this is sad. All right, besides just the the consideration of the Canadian government to to ban Fox News, I mean, just this statement itself is just so sad. I think it's sad um, in terms of how it warps reality, and I think it's sad in terms of how it. Uh, it continues to push this novel notion of victimhood in the direction of what it's always meant to be, and that's to cry bully your own way over other people. Victimization, ironically, is nothing more than modern day tyranny. It, it, vi those, the first ones to cry victim are the most victimizing and tyrannical populations imaginable. I mean, victimhood is simply the contemporary technique du jour for age-old coercion and manipulation. It's nothing more than that. I mean, we've talked about that before. Remember, victimhood in a cultural Marxist frame, cultural Marxism by definition, creates two classes of populations, victimizers and and victims, right? So you've got the, the oppressor and the oppressed. And the way crying victim works is as a twofold role in society. First and foremost, it's a political rallying cry in that it incorporates all of these minority cultures, minority races, minority sexualities, the increasing number of genders is, I think, one of the reasons why they segment gender, because if women, by definition, are in the majority, right? 51% or so. So if you segment gender, now you've got this majority of minorities, as it were. So what they do is they, they, they incorporate all of these minority identities into a huge, supposedly huge majority identity of victims. That's number one. And then number two, at the same time, victimhood denigrates representatives of the dominant culture like Tucker Carlson as agents of racial, gender, and sexual oppression who in turn need to be oppressed. It's called repressive tolerance. That's so key. Victimhood, whenever, ever, ever you hear victimhood crying out, right? The, the, the cries of victimhood. Somebody is being called to be oppressed. That's the key. It, it's never a matter of in, total inclusion. It's always a matter of who now are we going to newly exclude? So in other words, it's, a, it's, a, it's just nothing more than a collective bully. Victimization is nothing more than a political and cultural bully that denigrates and despises and disparages others for the sake of attaining their own power. But regardless, uh, we'll all have to see what Canadian officials do with this complaint. 
Um, but it is enough for them to be at least considering banning Fox from the cable news airways. I, so who knows? Maybe this is another reason why they got rid of Tucker. I don't know, to be honest. But it's just another headache for Fox News. And again, they're le- learning the hard way. They're kind of get woke, go broke. By getting rid of by by firing their number one anchor, three point five million audience um, uh, personality, he's taken that whole audience with him, and now Fox is behind MSNBC, which is just a one of the most sh- you know shrill, I mean h- ridiculous network imaginable. But regardless, they they shot themselves in the foot. But first, gang, what if I told you? that there was a small group of investors out there who consistently and wildly outperformed the market? Well, I think you know there is. Corrupt politicians like Nancy Pelosi and establishment senators have been using their security clearances and exclusive knowledge to their advantage in the market for decades now. They know when sales are up. They know when earnings are going to be. They know about legislation, incoming Fed changes, and a host of other inside baseball tips that gives them an unfair advantage when it comes to picking stocks. When these big wigs make moves, odds are they know something. And thanks to a little-known SEC database, guess what? We can see what and when these people are buying. Not only do we get to see it in real time, but we get to piggyback on their trades to gain the same advantage for ourselves perfectly, legally, and ethically. My friend Ross Givens has been tracking insider trading for years, and his recommendations have led to investment returns of over 200%. Some of, has some of it as high as nearly 1,500%. And according to him, there's no better way to beat the market. And now it's your turn. Click on that link below right now and learn how you too can learn to trade like Pelosi. Click on that link and learn how to gain an insider advantage for yourself. Now, speaking of banning, speaking of shooting themselves in their foot, whatever pivot you want, we got another Soros-backed DA biting the dust. This is St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kimberly Gardner. She's a George Soros-backed prosecutor. If you recall, she's the one who prosecuted the McCloskeys, right? Uh, Mark and Patricia McCloskey were defending their home from BLM activists who had just come back from burning down burning down downtown St. Louis. Well, she's done. She's out of there. She just announced her resignation from office effective June 1st. She's been under immense pressures. She's been subject uh, to an indirect criminal contempt court hearing. Uh, She was kicked off charges against the McCloskeys. She's had a number of staff resign. And the uh, Missouri Attorney General, a fellow by the name of Andrew Bailey, He's basically been actively attempting to remove her from office. What red states like Missouri are doing, it's really neat, is they're starting to transfer uh, the way circuit attorneys are are installed. So rather than uh, getting directly elected by city residents who have been, frankly, manipulated uh, by Soros' money, and they've been voting in these radical leftist DAs, Well, red state governments now are coming in and basically saying, all right, you you keep putting in these radical Soros backed DAs who are instituting anarcho tyranny on our populations and literally getting people killed. You keep doing that. Well, then we're going to we're not going to hold the elections anymore. We're just going to appoint them from now on. And that's what Missouri, as I understand it, is uh, is doing as we speak. They're putting into process um, the, uh, the, the means by which um, a, either the governor or the district attorney is going to start appointing circuit attorneys so as to eradicate their state of these soros back DAs. And uh, that'll finally put an end, it seems, at least within the borders of red states, it'll finally put an end to the anarcho tyranny that's taken over uh, our urban areas, right? So, you know, what anarcho tyranny in in a nutshell is you getting charged a hundred dollar fine because your parking meter went 10 seconds over while the homeless guy 
five feet away from you, uh, shooting himself up with heroin and taking a crap on the sidewalk is completely exonerated and left alone, right? That's anarcho tyranny. We're law abiding citizens because of this oppressor oppressed victimizer of vi victim uh, uh, binary. Um, uh, this cultural Marxist woke frame, because of that, law-abiding citizens are now the new criminals. Law-abiding citizens are now the legitimate object of persecution and oppression by the law. So we weaponize the law in such a way that recreates society in a new kind of caste system where Democrat constituents are now the un uh, well they're they're the the highest level of the caste system I was going to say they're un they're the untouchables but that would be the lowest level in, in a uh, traditional caste system but they but they're now they're now above the law the law doesn't impact them at all they can shoot they can murder they can you know, burn down cities everything's fine you so much as run your meter uh, over 10 seconds boom 100 dollar fine right so that's anarcho tyranny it's literally destroying our nations city as cities and so red state governments are starting uh, to step in and strip much of their big city mayors and their city council's power um and uh, turn it and da's and so forth and turn it over uh to the state so that cities now within red state's borders are going to have to abide by the same laws and by the same ethos the same fa family faith freedom ethos law abiding culture that the rest of the state abides by. So they're basically starting to take over their cities, thank God. And again, she's but the latest. Remember, we had the San Francisco DA a few months back. He got voted out, this radical Soros back DA. I did, I did a video earlier this week on California collapsing. I mean, San Francisco is just literally, literally Mogadishu at this point. So hopefully this trend of taking over red state governments, taking over their Soros-ruled cities continues. Because if we do that again, we're going to see the red state economy flourishing and the blue state economy continuing to implode.